damn it. That's how I look when my 3D tracking goes wrong in After Effects. It really boils my blood. Now, all the anger aside, every filmmaker has done some tracking in their life. From a following text on a drone shot, to a super complicated 3D track for some VFX. And let that be a coincidence. The last couple of weeks I have been creating the VFX shots for Jordy's Big Faroe Island project. Ocean 1, Jordy 0. Like you already know, he is making an Avatar inspired film. And of course, the Avatar can bend stuff. Meaning? Let's blow shit up with fire. Let's blow it up. However, because Jordi made moving and dynamic shots, I first need to track everything, otherwise I can't add the VFX. For example, if your avatar creates a flame floating above his hand, it needs to stay above the hand, even if Jordi sprints around like a maniac. And this can be done with the 3D camera tracker, but sometimes that tracking can fail, or it doesn't solve the right point. So here are 7 tips to make your 3D camera tracking work all the time. Tip number one starts with how you take your shot. Of course you can move around, go handheld and whatnot, but don't move too fast or too snappy. It will create too much motion blur and tracking on motion blur is super hard. An easy fix for that is to increase your shutter speed so there is less motion blur. Another thing you need to pay attention to is to have a floor and wall in your framing. This will give After Effects an idea of the space you are filming in. Don't be like Jordi and forget about this all the time. And finally think about the texture on the ground and the walls. Is there enough variety and contrast? Good. This will make the tracking go better. Tip number two, we have our shot, but there's some crazy lady moving around too much. Such moving subjects or objects will confuse After Effects. Which brings me to the realization on how confused After Effects really is. The average error number within the 3D camera tracking settings gives you an indication on how good the tracking is. The lower, the better. Now let's say you do a tracking with a moving person in the shot. After tracking is done, you can see how good the tracking is with the average error number. And as you can see, it can be better. You can delete the tracking markers on your moving talent, simply select them and hit delete. This will let After Effects know that it can ignore the part of the scene, making the tracking more most of the time better. Tip number three, and don't hate me for this or call me stupid. Stupid. But doing your tracking again after it kind of failed can also work. Ask an artist to remake a painting. It won't be exactly the same. You can do the tracking over and over again. And speaking out of experience, oftentimes you end up with a tracking that works or is better. All right, enough yapping, Janik. I want to show you guys how the edit is going of the fruit project. So right here, we're inside Premiere. And as you can see, this is one hell of a timeline. There's still lots to do. And we're hoping to finish the video in two weeks. Wish me luck. Actually, it's all going to depend on Janik and how fast he can do it via VIX. Now, I have something for you guys that you probably didn't know existed yet. That is this right here. This right here is Storyblocks. They are sponsoring today's video, but we're also looking at their plugin, which works right inside Adobe Premiere Pro. You've get access to over a million high quality royalty free stock assets. I can also just search for something in here like a lens flare. I can just then download any lens flare. I can choose a format and it will automatically be imported into my project. So no longer I have to leave Premiere, go to a browser and whatnot. And everything stays very nicely organized within my project. Now, it doesn't stop at lens flitters. We have other overlay effects as well as green screen clips, animated backgrounds, Premiere Pro templates, and it even goes beyond that, guys. We can find high quality music, sound effects, which we use the library all the time for, images, vectors, photos, and of course, the high quality stock videos in HD or 4K resolution. All of that can be accessed within that plugin. This is probably the best thing out there to try out different stock assets to see what works best within your edits. You're not losing time anymore by staying in Premiere, and thus, you can focus focus on what you can do best, and that is create. So take back your creative control with Storyblocks and a brand new plugin to access unlimited royalty-free stock assets and tools. You can click the first link in the description down below or just go straight to storyblocks.com forward slash cinecom to learn more. And now, back to Janik. And back to me. The next tip I want to share with you are some settings that will help After Effects to do a better job. Let's start with the shot type, and it's kind of self-explanatory. But here you can determine how you made your shot. If you were zooming, of course, choose the variable zoom option. But if you didn't and used a fixed focal length, then pick the fixed angle of view option. These two options will help the tracker better understand what is going on. Now for the other option, the specify angle of view. This is actually the lens you shot with, the focal length. But After Effects wants 
to know the horizontal angle instead. So for 15 millimeters, that would be around 100 degrees. How do I know that? Google. For the solve methods, the options are again pretty obvious. The typical option is for when you have a lot of different objects in your shot. Mostly flat is for flat surfaces like a table or the side of a building. And the last option, the tripod pan. Well, I think the name says it all. Now, if you aren't sure what to choose, you can always keep it set on auto. Let After Effects make the hard decisions. But keep in mind, it can be wrong. Tip number five, and it sounds silly, but there's an option called detailed analysis. Enabling that will actually do a better job. Or most of the time. After Effects will do a more in-depth tracking. But to make sure that it works, just look at the average error number and see if the tracking is better. Tip number six, and this one isn't really to make your tracking better. It's more like an inspection to really make sure that your tracking and the scene is ready to go. When I'm done with all the tracking, I will always look for a point where the target lays flat on the ground or what should be the ground. If I found one, I right click and choose set ground plane and origin. This will tell After Effects, hey, hello there. This right here is the origin of my 3D space and you need to align everything around that point. Meaning that if I would add some 3D assets later on, they will always spawn at this origin point. And now that I have set my ground plane, I can again right click and choose create solid and camera. But why do I need a solid? Well, if I scrub through my timeline, the solid will show me if my tracking worked. Easy as that. I also use this solid as a reference to place other objects in my 3D space. For instance, if I would animate some fire around the avatar, I can create a solid at their feet and then I know where to animate the fire to go around the solid, making the sense of location in 3D much easier. And finally for tip number 7, normalizing the 3D tracking. Sometimes when I do a tracking I get this huge 3D space and it seems like the tracking worked but the camera is actually doing a super big movement. This indicates that After Effects interprets our scene scale a little bit wrong, or very wrong. But we can fix that with a simple free script from Workbench that normalizes your scene scale. I'll leave a link below for that script. After you have put it in the right folder, you can find it back in the menu on top, window, and then all the way on the bottom. It will match the track scene scale more closely with the default After Effects scene scale. Now here's a great exercise to practice 3D tracking. Animate the line going through the environment in your shot. I happen to have a great tutorial about that on my left. Thank you so much for watching, thank you Storyblocks for the support, and as always, stay creative.